Sagam, Sagam, into outer space, into outer space, Narada, Narada, the great sage Narada, the great sage Narada, Saha, Saha, along with, along with, Tumburu, Tumburu, his string instrument, his string instrument, Yudhisthira, Yudhisthira, Maharaj Yudhisthira, Maharaj Yudhisthira, Racha, Racha, instructions. Dasha of his, Vridhi Kritva, keeping in the heart, keeping in the heart, Ajahat, Ajahat, gave up, gave up, Sucha, Sucha, all limitations, all limitations. So I'll say, and you say, having spoken thus, having spoken thus, the great sage Narada, the great sage Narada, along with his Vina, along with his Vina. Ascended into outer space. Ascended into outer space. Yudhisthira kept his instructions. Yudhisthira kept his instructions in his heart. In his heart. And so was able. And so was able, able to get rid of all lamentations. To get rid of all lamentations. Having spoken thus, the great sage Narada, along with his Vina, ascended into outer space. Yudhisthira kept his instruction in his heart, and and so was able to get rid of all his lamentations. <coughs> it's interesting that they refer to the stringed instrument as, like a, it says, tamburu. Like, you know, I was thinking that, I forgot, it's a bean, I thought it was a tambor. The tam Tem tambor. 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 We used to have, always have one in the temple. Yeah. I remember we used to do a program that all the time. Anyway, uh, the purport by Srila Prabhupada, and Prabhupada said these purports are his emotional ecstasies. Yeah. Sri Narada is an eternal spaceman, having been endowed with a spiritual body by the grace of the Lord. He can travel in the outer spaces of both the material and spiritual worlds without restriction and can approach any planet in unlimited space within no time. We have already discussed his previous life as the son of a major. Because of his association with pure devotees, he was elevated to the position of an eternal spaceman and thus had freedom of movement. One should therefore try to follow in the footsteps of Narada Muni and not make a futile effort to reach other planets by mechanical means. Mara Yudhisthira was a pious king and therefore he could see Narada Muni occasionally. Anyone who desires to see Narada Muni must first be pious and followed in the footsteps of Narada Muni. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports of the first canto, 13th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled Dhritarashtra Quits Home. Having thus spoken, uh, having spoken thus, the great sage Narada, along with his Veena, ascended into outer space. Yudhisthira kept his instruction in his heart, and so was able to get rid of all lamentations. It's hard to follow on Narada Muni's footsteps since he flies, but uh, we can follow his, in other words, footsteps means his example, so. Um, <clears throat> uh, and, and I also find it interesting because, as far as I, my understanding, these purports, and uh, this particular, this is the first canto, uh, part one, and so he's writing, Prabhupada was writing these in the 50s, and the, the real serious space race started like, maybe 58 or 59, 60, 61. That's when John Kennedy made the famous inauguration speech, that, you know, to go, uh, <coughs> uh, to make a, uh, by the end of this decade, we'll land on the moon. And um, I think the Russians did something in 59. Was was yeah, the first thing. yeah. But so this is prior to that. They, you know, that he know, you know, is talking about by mechanical means. And I can't remember if they, because I was just, preteen at that point. But still, I don't remember them talking about those things, but it's interesting that he, and he, the fact that he used the terminology as an eternal, or transcendental, was it eternal spaceman? Eternal spaceman. Eternal spaceman, yeah. That's, uh, that really rung well with the uh, hippie Sampradaya, to hear that eternal spaceman. So, he, it was like he, he, he was writing for, for, for the times, and it's actually for all times. But, you know, so here's Narada Muni, it's, he must actually, the denizens of the higher planets and someone like Srila Prabhupada, they just make people rolling, laughing, watching <coughs> this 
with our attempts to go to other planets with these big anti-gravitational uniforms that we put on, you know, the big oxygen things, and, you know, blasting off of all this fury, fire and fury into, into space, when actually, even they advanced that, hydrogen engines, probably. What? They're advanced hydrogen engines. Well, that's very nice. Uh, so, um, but they, but here, Norimuni just, he's with the wind, he's with the mind. And even the Siddhas from the higher planets, they don't even need wings. They can go from planet to planet, uh, no problem at all. I, and I heard this devotee giving a class about a week ago. His name is Bhakti Vijapurna Goswami. And uh, he was speaking, so maybe my poor. And uh, he said that, so Narada Muni can fly anywhere he wants, and the inhabitants of Vaikuntha, Sometimes they just want, want to go for a stroll, and they just go for a stroll down to the material world to go preaching for a while, and then they you know, go back, it's just strolling along. Because for them, everything is divine energy. Mm -hmm. That's the vision of the, uh, of the eternally liberated souls, and that's what our process is trying to uh, uncover. We, we're covered. It's like we, say you started to dig a hole, and, you know, it's maybe you're 50 feet down or 100 feet down to make, make the point more clear. By the time you get down there, when you look up, you can't see the sun. But the sun is still in the sky. So we've dug a big hole for ourselves. <coughs> we've gotten ourselves deep into the, the thick and mire of the material energy. Mm -hmm. And we're covered over. And this is a process that uncovers uncovers our actual nature, our actual... We, we say we want to develop love of God, but we are in love with God, but we've forgotten, and we don't, we've forgotten how. You know, uh, I heard this mundane uh, song that was saying that, you know, talking about it's easy to, to leave a relationship, but it's much more difficult to reestablish it. It's easy to break the relationship, so, but to re-establish it, you have to really work at that. And we've broken our relationship, but we actually are, our nature is to love Krishna, to, to love, to serve Krishna. And so what this, in this age, this process, this uh, divine process is the divine sound vibration. Like, um, I was talking yesterday with some devotee, and that I don't know much about technology, but um, like say if I want to call any one of you, you all have numbers subscribed to you mm -hmm. by the telephone company. So I, I do a, a physical act of pushing in the numbers. And those numbers will connect me to your um, cell phone, which is like a, a, it's a sound wave or, or I don't know if it's a radio wave. Or, what is it, Mr. Physicist? What is this? How do the telephones work? What, because if they're wireless. So what kind of wave is it? Electromagnetic wave. What? Electromagnetic wave. Electric magnetic. So pushing in those magic numbers connects me to you personally in the electromagnetic wave. And then if I want to watch uh, some news program or sports event, you find out the station and you change the channel to that channel and that will connect you to that wave so you can see that and not see, you know, the shopping network or something else. You get that. Um, so there are all these waves in the, and, and, and one of the verses, I think you, when you gave a class or a purport a couple of weeks back, there was one about the channel uh, uh, or um, that there was the, the super soul, we channel, he was channel, channeling the energy, or the current, that's what it was, the current. The current. So these are like currents that we connect to. And it's like an electric current. He said it was electromagnet. So these are electric currents. These are uh, very subtle and we can connect. But even more subtle is the divine current, which is uh, vibrating all throughout the creation. And 
by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, that is the station that we want to turn on. And then, we, if we chant it properly, avoiding the ten offenses, and, and chant in association with other people, it's even stronger. It's like connecting, it's like an antenna. When I used to do Harinam more frequently, I always felt like we were like a, a radio antenna to the spiritual sky. So no matter what, how people reacted to us, whether they drive by and go, hey, you know, whatever, I didn't care. I really did not care. I still, you know, I never had a problem with that. Because I had a gradual, you know, uh, uh, introduction to Harinam because I, where I got off from work on the train in Boston, that's where the Harinam party was. I would see the Harinam party everywhere I went. Then I actually went on Harinam in San Francisco. Then my first, you know, few months was always Harinam all day long. And it, it just was so natural. And it, it, the, the more they laughed, or I didn't, it, you don't care because you know, you know you're connecting with Krishna and it's spiritualizing the whole atmosphere. And everyone's benefiting from it. it and, and we're unleashing the divine energy. And that this is Narada Muni's position, that he's always in this divine energy. He's never uh, uh, restricted. He doesn't need a passport, he doesn't need a visa, he doesn't need a ticket. He doesn't need to, you know, when I first went to India, the first, in 75, we used to have to get um, vaccinations. I think it was like yellow fever, cholera, typhoid, at least three, I remember, maybe it was a couple more. And then they changed it the next year. But you have to get vaccinations, you have to be um, security checks, they have to get, uh, make sure that you're um, not carrying any weapons or any contraband of any sort. All of these procedures that we have to go through, such a hassle. And then what to speak, he's not even leaving with the sutra kit. He just goes. He's self-sufficient, self-contained. Uh, you know, and it's not the instrument, sometimes in the beginning, we used to think that it was because of the veena, the sound vibration of the veena, he could travel. It's not. It's like, you know, Mara's Pritu, when he's being coronated as the king, all the demigods and the residents of the heavenly planets come and offer him all these beautiful gifts. And one of them, I think it was the, people, uh, the residents of the Siddha Lokas. I can't remember exactly. I'm not, maybe, I think, because Vayu, I think, gave him a whisk, uh, a charm whisk. But um, I, he gets these magic slippers. And as soon as he puts his feet in the slippers, whoosh, wherever he wants, he goes. Hmm. Well, no, no, we'll have to worry about the price of gas, the oil change in the car, is there a traffic jam, uh, you know, or is the flights late on time, you know, you just... Accidents, you want, no accidents? No accidents, no, 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 it's all just, and that's the complete freedom. You know, we have this uh, concept in America, we used to always talk about the communist countries, that we have freedom of travel. We could go, I mean, maybe Nanda Sutta could sit, speak, you know, he knows he was in, living in the, behind the Iron Curtain. Um, so, but we were always told that if you wanted to go to the next village, you had to get permits. If you, if you weren't going on the prescribed route, like to your job or to that store, you, if you were going outside of your prescribed route, you had to have permits and there were checkpoints everywhere you went. But whereas in America, you just get in the car and you can go to California, you can go to Alaska, you can go, if you can, if there's, you know, adequate roads, you can go down to South America. You can go anywhere you want. That, you know, we can, we can drive without any, uh, you know, of course now, well, if you, if you, unless you're driving a truck, <laughs> then you're regularly being pulled over at a way station and they want to see your book and a diary of everything you've done when you're driving and when you're not driving. I used to hate that when we were driving those little trucks for, for uh, touchstone. touchstone because, they, you know, they, we have these little 15-foot box trucks and so they figured these guys don't know what they're doing. They don't have <laughs> So this is an easy, this is, this, is a couple, <laughs> this is a couple bucks for us here. And we we'll go over our... Um, and I didn't like that. 
And, um, but again, I didn't, I, I thought you'd just fill out the book for while I'm driving, but I'm supposed to fill out the book when I'm not driving. I have to explain myself. Mm -hmm. It was such a relief to just get in the car and go and not have to worry about the way, whether the way station was open or not. It was such a pain. And then they do a complete inspection on the truck. So anyway, we have that freedom. No, and not everybody can go wherever he wants. And so now, he's given the instructions. Once again now, Eudistirus needed some help with his feeling for, like after the Battle of Kirk, etc. He was very distraught and he was very concerned about the suffering uh, and all the, all the people that, that had died. Uh, helping to put him on the throne, and how, how that affected all their families. And only Grandfather Bijma could, Bijma could uh, relieve his um, distress, his lamentation. It, uh, he was feeling remorse. And now again, he's feeling some lamentation and feeling guilty that maybe he didn't take care of Dhritarashtra, his uncle, and Gandhari. So Narada Muni comes, and he frees him from this. But I was thinking about this, uh, you know, and, and I, you know, I have to say that for, I, I had these dogs and I was so attacked. I mean, I still grieve over those, not having that, the association of these living entities. But they're particles of God. We are just a particle. And, we, and, and that particle gave so much joy, so much love, so much pleasure. Just from not uh, an invisible part, we can't even see it. So you imagine how much love and pleasure there is from the origin of the particle. Mm. You can't. You can't. Oh, no. yeah. It's beyond. But the, we, we, we we see like if a relative, you know, you just recently had a, uh, a relative pass away, or your friends, or some. Uh, I had a friend pass away last year. You know, it's very painful. You start thinking, I. You know, I can't go on telling this joke. Like I just, I just made up a little joke the other day. <laughs> I'm going to share it with you right now. It's this thing, very corny, and, and but very deep metaphysical. Okay, why does the Hare, why did, why did, why did the Hare Krishna shave his head? Why? I know why. What? You told me after. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> to get to the other side. Yeah. <laughs> It's <laughs> good. I told you, very corny. You have to be a devotee to get it. But yeah. yeah, yeah, no, exactly. But you know, we, we, how many times do you ask that question? You know, and what time did I not told me and Pushkar at L.A. Rafiatra? Because Pushkar is very acerbic, and I, I, I guess I have a tendency to be that way. And um, so. Uh, they had this booth called Perfect Questions, Perfect Answers. So he said, the Gokul and Pushkar, they should have the booth, a man, the booth called Stupid Questions, Stupid Answers. So, <laughs> you know, just like, if you're going to waste our time, you know, don't waste my time. So, um, uh, but no, I thought it was a clever answer to get to the other side. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm going to submit it to uh, somebody. I'm submitting it to you all, all of you. You're, you're, and I, I don't expect any royalties or anything. If you want to use it, go ahead. Uh, it was super soul. But I'm sure somebody's thought of that before. Anyway, so, uh, what was it talking about? <laughs> no, but so, the, the, so we lament over losing, losing the, our, our friends, and they're just, they are particles of the Supreme Personality of God. And we're separated from Him. Lord Chaitanya is saying every moment is like 12 years that he's feeling. And the key to the success of our mission, and I mean, all of us decided, we made a conscious decision to cut our ties with mainstream society, possibly even with our family members. Some people are fortunate that their family supported them. But, <coughs> You know, so a lot of us d didn't. And friends, all those things, you cut your ties with that at, to become a Hare Krishna. And you had a motive, you had a goal in mind. An ultimate goal. 
Like when you go to decide, I'm going to go to college, I'm going to do this, this is my ultimate goal. I want, I have, this is what I want to accomplish with my life. So sometimes along the road, you forget. But our ultimate goal is to become self-realized. And self-realized means to, uh, to, to realize our eternal relationship with the Supreme Personality of God, to reawaken our love for Krishna. So, and, and the pure devotee sees everything as the divine energy of Krishna. And Krishna helps us by explaining to Arjuna the, the, his um, opulences. I'm the ability in man. I am the light of the sun and the moon. I am the taste of water. Anything, anytime, every beverage that you ever drink has water involved with it. Water, uh, orange juice is water. Uh, you know, Coca-Cola, there's water. Wine, there's some water involved. Even Prabhupada said, tell the, the wine, the people addicted to wine, think this is the taste of God. That's a way to think. This is divine energy of Krishna. And we see Krishna and practicing it, practicing it, practicing it with bhakti, the key ingredient. Our motive can't be mixed. And it's hard not to have a mixed motive. But the pure our motive, the pure our devotion, the more rapidly we begin to experience what we are separated from. And we're missing out on a lot. We, we, we're missing out on eternity. We're missing out on bliss, on increasing love and bliss. No fears. No anxieties, no uh, you know separations because of death, or no diseases, you know, no taxes. You don't have a tax in the spiritual world. You don't have to pay, worry about that. You don't have to worry about the temperature, or listen to the weather. What's the weather going to be like tomorrow? You know, you don't have to worry about growing old or getting sick. Can I eat this? Can I drink that? Yes, yes, yes. It's all good. It's all bliss. Anyway, I would like to talk about Vrindavan Das Thakur. He is the author of the Chaitanya Bhagavad. Yeah. Can I say one thing before yeah. we go to the next slide? Okay. That point you were making about uh, being able to travel. Uh, Prabhupada gave a lecture in uh, Dallas where they asked him, uh, how was your flight? You remember that? It was vaguely. It was very Not incredible. Exactly. It was incredible. It's a moment like entering into the mystical realm that we knew nothing about. But he asked him, how was your flight? And Prophet said, this flying is nothing new. <laughs> he said, formerly there were three ways to fly. Oh, yeah. So just the question was, how was your flight? Yeah. <laughs> so Prophet said, uh, three, one was by, uh, I know he said by the seat of the office sign. He said, I know that. And then he said, with mantra. And then he said, with carpet. He said, magic. No, he said, pigeons. Yeah, he said, like, no, just let me finish. Oh. He said, with carpet. But then, also, he said, or oh, you could train up several hundred pigeons, and they would fly you anywhere in the universe. <laughs> yeah. I don't have the exact, but I remember exactly that those were mentioned. The carpet was mentioned. So when you mentioned about anywhere to fly, it came to my mind. I thought, how amazing that was that probably was telling us you used to fly with magic carpet and we always Alibaba and that 43 whatever. <laughs> they used to actually go with magic carpet, fly with carpet. Yeah, I think the carpet and its Vyasa sound were the same kind of thing, I think you were saying. And, and mantra, yeah. Yes. And even uh, my son was telling me in that movie, there's a movie out now, and in, in the, the when they fly these, they like Vimanas and they're, they're just thinking, they're just meditating and plane or the vehicle flies. So they've gotten some information, you know. And, and they talk about Hanuman in it also. But it's not nothing spiritual. But it's you can see it's creeping in. Like I, I went to the to this uh, periodontist the other day and I had to tell him that my last visit to a dentist was in India because I didn't want to get uh, our friends in trouble. Uh, the local dentist, some of the boys go to. So 
I said, no, I just came back from the new So, um, excuse me, I told a lie. Um, so he immediately goes, oh, were you at an ashram? So, oh yeah, I, I go, yeah. I said, I practice yoga. Not like hatha yoga or stanga yoga or like that, physical, but mantra yoga, you know, um, it's called bhakti yoga. And he goes, oh yeah, my wife does that too. Go, oh, really? And he says, yeah, they sing, they get together and they do, and I said, the kirtans? He goes, yes, that's it, kirtans. <laughs> and he says, uh, and after he finishes my gums, he's sending me to this dentist who holds these eight-day uh, kirtan uh, or bhajans uh, in nuance. They have some festival, like a, you know, like a jazz festival or whatever, but they all, all the yoga studios get together and chant and sing bhajans and kirtans. So, and th this is like a, he's probably not much younger than me, maybe he's 10 years younger than me, uh, maybe 15 at the most. Very successful periodontist and the dentist he's talking about. And, um, and they're all, that's what they're into right now. So, uh, you know, I'm wondering why I had this problem with my gums, and then I realized why. Because it's giving me a chance to connect with, hopefully connect with these people. I just hope they say the right things. Um, yeah, so, um, but he did say also pigeons, which really blows my mind. Mm -hmm. That totally, that there are pigeons that can fly and take you. They used to know how to train them. It makes so much sense when you think about it. They had carrier pigeons. Right, right. It just makes so much sense. And, and also there are other eagles other than Garuda. They're very powerful that you can also help with, apparently. Uh, if I remember correctly. He actually refers to them as Garuda birds that lay their eggs in space. There's so much. I mean, what a world, what a life we live. The planet where Guru comes from, they're all like him. Yeah. And they're, they're human, they have human form, but they have wings also. Yeah. So. The eagles in uh, Lord of the Rings came from there, of course. Well, there's a lot about the Lord of the Rings that, you know, we can see. But actually, the Lord of the Rings really came from uh, uh, Icelandic um, folklore. You know, uh, apparently he almost completely ripped it off. I was listening to this documentary about it, but um, you know that there's so much in that. In that, it's very coming from the Vedas. It seems like to me. Um, so, yeah, I didn't really want to end the class uh, at that point, but I think, um, and I'm glad that you uh, are interested enough to make some comments. Um, and I, I would like to continue discussing some of these other points. But uh, I really think it's important on Vindavan Das Thakur's appearance day to say something in his honor. Um, so, Vindavan Das Thakur is in the, Krishna Das Kaviraj says in the Adi Lila, chapter 11, I think it is, uh, verse 55, uh, um, that Vindavan Das is Veda Vyas in the Krishna Lila. He, and also, he's a cowherd boy, and his name is Kushuma Pida. Kushuma Pida. And um, just like Vyasa wrote the Shrimad Bhagavatam about Krishna, Vrindavandas wrote the Shrimad Bhagavatam uh, about, I mean, excuse me, the Chaitanya Charita. I mean, the Chaitanya. First, originally it was called the Chaitanya Mangala, but when Lochan Das wrote his. Uh, book or scripture about Lord Chaitanya, he chose that name. So Vrindavan Das changed his uh, book to Chaitanya Bhagavat, but initially it was Chaitanya Mangala. So sometimes there's some confusion about that. But so Vrindavan Das was um, uh, four years old when Lord Chaitanya took sannyas, and he took sannyas at the age of 28, and um, he left, he, he passed on uh, at the age of 48. So, Vrindavan Das was 20 when Lord Chaitanya left the planet, and he was approached 
to write the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So some of them he personally witnessed, and some of them he heard from others. Now, he, what, what's emphasized is that none of these uh, individuals, like Krishna Das Kaviraj or Chaitanya, uh, or um, uh, Vrindavan Das, uh, Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, they never talk about themselves. They never brag about anything or their personal uh, dealings with the Lord. They, um, even when Vrindavan Das is talking about his mother, he doesn't let you know that it's his mother. And his mother was very special. Her name was Narayan. And actually, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I've, I heard, or did I hear it? I read it. But anyway, um, she is in Krishna Leela. There's a nurse called, I think her name is Ambika, and she's the sister of that nurse. So when she was four years old, oh, and the father of, of, of Vrindavan Das, some people say they don't know, but other people have said his name is uh, Vaikuntanath Vipra. And he passed away when Vrindavan Das was very old. So the mother is the main influence on his life. And she was, I believe, a niece of Sri Rastakur. And when she was a young girl at the age of four, she would go to Sri Rastakur's, uh, her uncle's home, and um, Chaitanya once gave her an entire plate of Mahaprasad, and she ate the whole plate. And then another time, some betel nuts that he chewed, he gave to her, and she, and she chewed, chewed them at the age of four. Mm. Then there's a very interesting pastime where the Kazi, and this is the beginning of the Hari Nam, and you know, before Lord Chaitanya, in his, uh, when he's a scholar, in that stage where he's a scholar, in, in Namajwe, it's very important, this scholarship and, and debating are very important. This, this is a, a Namatweep is like a, an Athens of, uh, you know, knowledge and lots of philosophical debates are going on and, you know, people are, get reputations as really knowing the Shastra and by winning uh, these different debates and Lord Chaitanya is killing it. I mean, he had all the wonderful qualities of the Supreme Personality, he got it, but he had one that was not attractive, which was, at that time, he was arrogant. And because that's the nature of a scholar, they, he was very proud of his success. Prabhupada even once said in a letter to some of the devotees who were doing college preaching, Prabhupada says, yes, these professors, they are puffed up, but that is their right. They've achieved some, you know, some knowledge. So you just approach them like Lord Chaitanya approached Prakashananda Saraswati with a <coughs> straw or a blade of grass between your teeth, humbly, like that. So, um, but that, and when he finally went into the Harinam stage, you know, that was gone, that he gave up that, that quality. And, but the Kazi decides that he's got to put an end to the street kirtan. And um, so he orders two ships full of soldiers to come. And they're coming down the river. And uh, Srivas, you know, he's very, he gets in a lot of anxiety about this. So they, he gets all the other devotees together and they go back to his house and they start doing uh, the Shingadev Puja. They're offering incense and doing perpetual Shingadev Puja to protect themselves. And meanwhile, Lord Chaitanya is walking through the streets of Mahavir saying, I am He. <laughs> I am He. I am He! Like that, walking through the streets. I am He! So then he goes to Sri Vasa's house and he's banging on the door. They won't open the door. They want to continue the puja. You know, they don't want to stop doing the puja. So finally, he kicks in the door. And he says, Sri Vasa, what are you doing? And he says, uh, because he has these soldiers coming. I want to protect everyone. I have to, we're taking shelter of Lord Vashrinda. Uh, Don't you know by now who I am? I am He! <coughs> and then he 
then he goes to Narayani, she's four years old, she sa he says, chant the Hare Krishna mantra. So she starts chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, and she starts to get a, a swoon, and then she gets completely in ecstasy, and then she's rolling around on the ground in total ecstasy, a four-year-old girl chanting the Hare Krishna mantra on Lord Chaitanya's instructions. And everyone realizes, he is he. He is he. <laughs> and they become completely blissful. You know. So, um, you know, this is um, one of his pastimes that are described in the Chaitanya Bhagavad. And um, I just wanted to, on this day, say something in his glorification. I'm trying to think of something else. I can't recall. But maybe someone else would like to add something. Anyone? Anyone else have anything they'd like to add about the How about our Bengal? Did, did, did you read about? It seems to me that he let. Was it Narayani that sucked his toe? Also, or is that somebody? Else? No, I think so. That, no, that's Kali Guruna. <coughs> yes. Narayani's <coughs> husband passed away when right. Vrindavan Das was in the womb. Uh, oh. And she uh, lives in the house of the poor Brahmin, just in the room. And Vrindavan Das, of course, went for his studies. Uh, when he was, let me think for a moment. I think when he was born, Lord Chaitanya had already left the Sanyas. And like you said, when he was in the was about 20, he had concluded his studies that Lord Chaitanya had passed on. And so he took initiation from Nityananda Prabhu, Nityananda's eternal servant. And his last disciple, and then um, his son took. Yes, no. His, no, his, uh, his, his Vrindavan does. He's mentioned on his last disciple, yeah. And he instructed uh, Vrindavan Das to write that time. Um, right. To say time to yeah. Child, uh, so he wrote a child. very nice uh, uh, no. poem in the Chaitanya Charnamrita that Krishna Das Kaviraj offers to Vrindavan Das. A poem? A poem, yeah. He, what, he what? mentioned several verses, but what? 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 Part of Lord Chaitanya's leader did he write? I mean, was there an age specific? As far as I can tell, he was writing. He, he writes a lot about the beginning to yeah. divide it, just like the Chaitanya Charnamrita is divided into the Adi Maya yeah. and Vanta. But he doesn't, he doesn't write as much on the Vanta. Yeah. That's why they want Krishna Das to write it. But I mean, he went to, to, how far did he go with Lord Chaitanya? A lot. It said that you know, by reading Chaitanya Bhagavat, one can understand the glory of the Lord Chaitanya uh, and become, uh, you know, a devotee. Anyone who hears it, whether one that it, 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 it actually says it even much, in much stronger words than that. It's that anyone who reads his writings of Chaitanya Bhagavat will attain, uh, re attain, you know, full. You know, praying with full bliss, full love of God. That's how powerful. Uh, this is Krishna Das Kavar saying this. And of course, that you know, they're glor He was glorifying them constantly uh, throughout the uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita. It, but it's, it, all of your inauspiciousness is uh, vanished by reading the Chaitanya Bhagavad. And probably wanted us to read. <clears throat> and um, Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada ha had translated. And uh, now you can read his translation in English. So he went all the way through Lord Chaitanya's Lila? Yeah. yeah. I was always thinking it was his childhood pastime, but no. no, this one was like when he was in the film. This, this one I just mentioned. And, and I think it also gives a description of the Maha, you know, another very important pastime of Srivas. <coughs> but I haven't read the entire uh, Chaitanya Bhagavad. I just, just recently discovered it. Sections that Krishna Das Kaviraj did not elaborate on was because Vindavan Das had elaborated. Right. elaborated he before. says that regularly. He says, I will not discuss these. Yeah. I'll only mention it because he's already discussed, but I will say blah, 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 blah. You know, so they're very respectful, but they, after 
with Chaitanya Bhagavat, and then Lochan had written Chaitanya Mangala, and um, that's why Vrindavan Das changed the name from Chaitanya Mangala to Chaitanya Bhagavat. Then uh, the rest of the Vaishnavas knew there was more, so they went to Krishnanath Kaviraj, and he was like almost 100, 98, or 99. He was blind. And um, as far as my understanding, the, the deities, um, was it Madan Mohan? Yeah, because he's mentioning Madan Mohan all the time. He's always offering respects to Rupa Raghunath, Madan Mohan, and he's instructing him about the pastimes. The deity is telling him. So Prabhupada chose to uh, translate Sri Chaitanya Because the devotees were asking him. And some of the devotees, like Gorasana and them, had gotten copies of it. So he realized that we had some interest in it. So first he did a TLC, I mean, the teachings of Lord Chaitanya, which is kind of a summary of it. And then he got, and then the famous story of Chaitanya Charitamrita, that story, they're on the beach. And he's, tra he's translated the whole thing, all 17 uh, books. I don't know if it's 17 volumes, or, but, um, and it's sitting there, and they're doing, you know, it's very slow, and so they're walking uh, out there on Venice Beach, and they're having a, a problem saying, well, how soon can you do, and they said something like, well, we could do um, maybe so many books every six months, and he said, no, and then he, and, it went like that, and finally the prophet said, I want them all done in two months. And Ramaswas goes, Impossible! And Prabhupada says, He just blurted it out. You know, he started thinking, like two months. He wasn't thinking, he just thought, That's impossible! And, and Prabhupada said, Impossible is a word in a fool's dictionary. <laughs> so then him and Ram Baba go in the back and they start thinking and how to do it. We, we had two shifts, two 12-hour shifts, and so then they tell Prabhupada, but they're going to need, you know, devotees from all parts, all over the world, all over the movement, people are expert typists and things of that nature, uh, editors and so on. And so they create a, 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 a system where it's going 24 hours a day, and the other devotees in L.A. are serving them. I mean, this all happened, like 75, 1975 was a really, I feel like a pinnacle year. I mean, Krishna Balaram Temple was opened, the first really big, and, and, and the, the significance of Krishna Balaram before that um, was all the temples that I'd ever been in were like this, or, or um, nothing wrong with this, but they're, they're not Vedic style temples, or like we take an old house and turn it into a temple. There was no temple, a Vedic style temple anywhere. And the first time I walked into it, um, it just the ambiance and looking at all the details and how they painted every little thing and all the little squiggly things and the flowers and just looking at it. And this is a just this is a Vedic temple. You just felt wow. Just being in it, you felt more spiritual, more in the mode of goodness. Something of Transcendental goodness, not just material goodness. Sudhasattva. And so that was the first Vedic temple built. Because Mayapur, they had just built the, the Lotus Building, and they had the temple down in what was supposed to be the garage. Because mm -hmm. uh, Prabhupada said, wherever we are, we, we, wherever we live, we have to worship. But you, he said, you have yet to see our temple. And we're still starting to see it now. Um, but. But then there was Juhu Beach, Bombay, that beautiful temple. So many temples like that. And then the, the Chaitanya Charitamrita was completed. The Krishna Balaram was opened. So many major events happened. Rama went to Atlanta. That's my next point. <laughs> <laughs> he, had, he took my cue. <laughs> well, the, but in Atlanta, the Bhaktivedanta Institute was established in 1975. He also came in the New Taliban. I think. That's right, he came to New Taliban. He also went to Chicago and installed Gordon All Tosh. those deities for the Gorpani, uh, yeah. for uh, yeah. Radhadamada. Yeah. He yeah. met the devotees, Radhadamada devotees in it. First Rathiatra in Chicago. First Rathiatra in Chicago. So I first went to the temple. And there you go. <laughs> there, there it is. <laughs> that was a very, it was like, a, this was a, Banner. Crescendo, the banner year. There were some other things that happened in that wow. year. 
should see what else happens. Yeah, yeah, you can go on and on. I mean, it, it amazes me when, you know, because colleagues playing all these lectures over and over again, and it amazes me how many places, because they'll come up and give the date and the and the, the place, and he was in Chicago, he was in Denver in 75, he was in Tehran in 75, he was in uh, Mexico, Venice, Caracas, Miami, Atlanta, he was like, everywhere, you know? Yeah. Down, yeah. So, anyway. Right. So, but I would just like to say that I happened to walk to the back of the Perot uh, yesterday, uh, on my attempt to do some exercise. Of course, I ran to London again, she invites me in, so half of my walk was sitting talking. <laughs> but I, I didn't walk all the way to your place. I wanted to see if you have a, um, a garden that's back to the right. I didn't go back there because you weren't there, but I know I turned in front of your place, and I noticed you've done this long, these long strips, uh, like they're, they're for gardens, or a lot of work. Initial tilling and covered with straw at this point to be developed as we... To have to go all the way to the other side of the field? Kind of, well, kind of around the back. Yeah, it's like four of them, isn't it? Lots of, lots of work, yeah. It's going to take a lot to do. Five? Yeah. yeah, they're doing a lot of work. The first one is planted partially. Yeah, I, I noticed rock. that. I was going to mention that. It's really nice. Huh? And, that, and that didn't happen in 1975. It happened this year. <laughs> we'll see what it is. 2018. How do you go? I'm going to yes. mention something. Uh, I don't know if everybody's aware of it. Maybe they announced it this morning that a senior disciple of Shiva Prabhupada passed away on a codice, which was, you know, the day before our codice. Her name was uh, Her Grace Akuti Devi Dasi. And I thought that was uh, noteworthy. She passed uh, in the Association of Devotees. At the Vandavan Hospice. But it's not the same Akuti that's in the Latra. I saw the picture, it's a different one. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I, that picture, if that was the picture you showed me, then, then it's a different, but still. I'm sure. yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's significant. Yeah. Very similar to something. Yeah. yeah, you know, I was thinking about an example about this discussion about senior devotees. I'd like to make this point. Yeah. Um, so, um, this is a material example, but um, it's, a, it's, like, I, it's almost like, I, it, yes, we, it's important to recognize uh, devotees and based on, you know, how many years they've been devotees and, uh, and, you know, so on and so forth. There has to be some proper etiquette. But it, it's not like we're establishing some kind of caste Brahmins here. And um, that's just based on, you know, how many years in. You know, you, you have to, you know, there's so many factors. And, but, um, and we also know that the more removed you are, the das and the das and the das and the das, the more nectar you're receiving. So, and a, a mundane example is, is Alfred Ford. Alfred Ford is three generations back from the original Henry Ford. And he has more wealth than his great grandfather. And he uses that wealth for real. You know, Henry Ford was you know, famous for trying to, you know, the people he worked uh, worked for him, they had to not smoke, they had to not drink. He was a very moral person. And, and he was the first one to pay what would they call a living wage. That's how he got people to work for him. And in a very monotonous, boring job, they left their independence. It was, that's, that's the thing he regretted at the end of his life, because he realized that this factory, this, this assembly line process that he created was a monster, and it killed people's soul. Mm. But the only way that they, they had such a turnover in their workforce because it was so monotonous. And they, and, and they destroyed the people's independence of being able to just go out and work the land, grow their own food. So uh, he had regrets about that. But so, and, and what my point is, is that here on the material level, somebody like Ambarish uh, is the great grandson of Henry Ford, but he has achieved a lot more than his father. 
great-grandfather. So, um, but he shows no respect to that great-grandfather. And the great, he wouldn't have it if it hadn't been for his great-grandfather. So there's, mutual, there's a mutual respect, but also that doesn't mean that because you're not a first-generation Prabhupada disciple, that you cannot make an enormous contribution to this movement. And we all have to keep that in mind. And we should encourage one another that way. And not make uh, people feel like, you know, well, I lost my chance. I blew it. Sometimes. And then also, we have to be good examples. But I just thought that was an interesting point I'd like to bring up that, you know, because I mean, I, I'm really hoping that there's going to be some amazing, you know, According to the predictions, there's going to be amazing accomplishments, and those people that are accomplishing it, they don't get polluted or corrupted by their success. Because we've all seen what happens whenever there's success that we've been tested. Whenever there's money and 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 uh, and more asset, assets, there's more greed, there's more jealousy, there's more quarreling. So hopefully they'll m m have great, enormous success free from all those inevities, the material inevities. Hmm. That's my prayer. And, you know, maybe I'll be one of them down, there, down the line. <laughs> so, I learned a prayer from Tejas Prabhu. He was saying, so have you thought about where you want to go when you die? And it's an interesting question. So, you know, so we had a discussion about it. He said, this is my prayer. I don't know if I'm... Yeah, anyway, a devotee told me this. It's confidential. A devotee, he said his prayer is that whatever species of life, uh, maybe I don't immediately take birth as human, but whatever species of life I, I'm in, I never forget what I know now. And I never forget Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. And then, when I, if I'm in the human form, I can remember Prabhupada, I can serve Prabhupada, and then remember the holy name of Krishna, and, and continue like that. That we never forget what we know and why we know it. And never, never forget to be grateful to Prabhupada. Ever. So that's... Because one devotee recently asked me, what do you... At the time of death, what do you think of Prabhupada, Lord Chaitanya, or Krishna? And he was shocked by my answer. My answer is Prabhupada. Because I can't get to Krishna or Lord Chaitanya without Prabhupada. I can't just walk in and say, Krishna, I'm here. <laughs> you know, we, we have to act in such a way that Krishna notices us. We can't just barge in. You know, we won't, he won't reveal himself to us. Krishna has two types of covering. And, and um, one of them is his, uh, his uh, covering of yoga mind. I mean, first of all, I may not be able to see Krishna because I don't have my glasses on. I can't really see him very clearly. But then I finally find my glasses, I put them on, and the curtains close. So now I can't see him. So one is, I can't see Krishna because I don't have spiritual vision. I haven't heard from the spiritual master. I have heard from the spiritual master. Now I try to act on his instructions, but then Krishna can decide to cover himself. Just like when Dhruva Maharaj became self-realized, Narada Muni became so they both of them, they said, he says to them, you know, he tells them that you you will get all these benefits, but for for the time being, you will not see me again for a long time. And you can't that is the yoga mind, my part. He reserves the right to your red. Nara Muni had to wait a very long time. So, uh, just in case, I'd like to just throw this point out there for us all to meditate on, and hopefully we develop a, you know, proper uh, relationships um, in, in dealing with one another. Anyway, uh, anyone else? Hi. Question. Yes. Um, on the proper relationships, he was uh, when, when 
Michael Charles, when he was here, he was saying respect for those senior and affection for those junior. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized you have to have respect and affection both ways. Yeah. If, the, if the seniors have only affection for the juniors, that'll be some kind of sentimental something and, and uh, maybe maybe sentimental subtle sense gratification for themselves. And if the juniors have only respect for the seniors, that could be fear. So there has to be respect and affection both ways. Just just externally, like you say, expressed kind of appropriately, but yeah. there has to be respect and affection both ways. I agree. Um, we're, we're misers and we're, we're being neglectful and we're committing violence if we don't share our experiences and our training in Krishna consciousness with these young bhaktas, you know, with these young people that are coming to this movement. They have no idea, nor have they been trained in what the principles are, the process of devotional service, the nectar of devotion, Sikshamrita, um, all these things need to be instructed and they, and they need to associate with senior people and the senior people have, should be available because we've got this wealth of knowledge. Prophet said this is an educational movement. We, sh we, we If we can't educate, how can we educate the public unless we, unless we train our, our, our own people, our own new devotees? You know? Yeah, Prabhupada told Guru Das that uh Preaching to the devotees is the highest form. Is the, is the essence. Yeah. Keeping so. the devotees. You know, get, getting them is one thing, but keeping them is another. Yeah. So we, in order to keep them, we have to train them. We have to encourage them. And, and uh, I don't think that goes on enough. Uh, it's gone. And especially here. So that's important. So here, thank you for coming. Honorable. Yeah.